Okay guys, another speed run. At this time, we want to make it to 2500. Now, the only thing is that I'm going to be showing you guys, and by the way, this is a voiceover to be able to explain the moves and ideas because we are playing three minute games, right? So I'm going to be showing you only the games that I played as the white pieces. And yes, I used the birds opening for each one of them. So here I'm playing a 2436. Those of you already following this, uh, my, my YouTube videos, you have seen this before. Basically, I want to do uh, pawn c3, try to play on the queen side because of my pawn structure. So anyhow, um, you're gonna see two main setups. This one with the fianchetto on the king side, and you're gonna see also this one where I fianchetto on the queen side or I don't fianchetto at all. So here I'm trying to decide, uh, should I take on e5? Well, it does make sense. And now I need to make a decision if I play bishop f4, gaining a tempo on the rook, if I do knight c4, gaining a tempo on the rook, or sometimes I just bring the knight to c2. Now here, it just made sense to improve that bishop. And after rook e6, of course, uh, this is guys middle game. So pretend like this is your game. How would you continue? Now, probably there were more energetic moves, but uh, knight c2 is just a nice way to incorporate your knight. I'm putting pressure on d4. Eventually, I need to move my queen to f2. And guys, this is something that I know because I have played this over and over. I have reviewed master games. So I more or less know what the typical plans are in the middle game. So knight on g4, I don't like my opponent's pieces in my territory. So I'm quickly thinking at some point, I need to kick that knight away. So c4, and now look, officially, look at my pawn structure, e2, d3, c4. I really want to be putting pressure on the queen side. Now, what should we do about that knight on e3? Do we take with the bishop? Do we take with the knight? Or do we leave her, <laughs> do we leave it where it is? Well, think what would you do and why? Well, I decided to just eliminate the, the knight, keep the pair of bishops, and of course, try to capitalize on that rook that was very awkward on, on e6. Now, here I missed a tactic. I hope that you guys found it. Tactics alert, but I think I ended up doing it uh, on the following move. And again, guys, we're playing a 2436. He knows what he's doing, but you see, I realized it right there. And now that's a fork. If the king takes, we just go bishop c7 and we get the queen. That's it. Now, from this moment on, you should know you either could go after the king because we have more pieces or more po uh, more powerful pieces like the queen, or you could simply simplify the game to go to an end game where you're going to be able to convert so before uh, being being consistent with my pawn structure again indicating to the queen side let's try to open up lines over there but guys honestly at this point you could win however you want and notice that we did all of these and we still have over a minute to close the game all right, so going after the isolated pawn. <laughs> now, I know that most of you, you're going to be guys just going after the king right away. I know. There we go. So nice tempo on the rook on a8 and just activating my rook. And of course, now our rook could be, could be coming in through the b file or we could have done rook f1 at some point, but now this is just too much. Um, quick deflection idea, if we take on c5, the bishop leaves that long diagonal and then we could do queen f6 followed by checkmate. And guys, of course, when our pieces are active, tactics are going to be in the air. Now here, is there any other way we could get rid of that dark square bishop? Well, we could just take it. Now, dark squares are completely weak. And after um, queen b7, that's it. They have to give him material and eventually they're going to get checkmated on g7. So there you go, guys. I'm talking a lot because I really want to explain every single move. Now, it was a little bit more complicated to make it to 2500 than in the other video where I made it to 2450. But eventually we made it there. So same setup with the king side, Fanchetto on the king side. There we go. And guys, you know the drill. I want to do e4, 
many times I just put my queen, my queen on e1 and then pawn e4. Now, I know we have talked about it so much. Birds opening, many people don't like it. But I'm trying to continue to reinforce this idea that if we make it to the middle game, guys, that's it. That's all we need. So openings are not that important. So here, am I concerned about a trade of queens? Not really. I know that I have to play c3 to confiscate d4, but also to make their bishop from the finchero not as powerful. Another thing to keep in mind, my pawn on e4 is keeping their bishop, uh, their knight on h6 pretty, pretty bad. So I activate my other knight, then the rook. And notice how my queen side knight, again, it goes to a3. From there, it could go to b5, it could go to c4, it could go to c2. Many people see it's kind of intuitive because you're going to the edge, but we know what the plan is. Now g4, I'm threatening g5. And we're not concerned about our king's safety because, first of all, they don't have their pieces coordinated to attack us. But also, that bishop on g2, guys, is acting as, as a pawn as well to defend the king. So they have to definitely do something. f6. Then the only piece that was doing nothing is uh, activated. And now it is time to bring my knight into the game. I could go to b5. I could go to c4. Here we go. Now guys, notice that I only pushed f5 after they did e5, because now with my pawn on f5, e5 would be available for the knight, but then since they pushed their pawn first, that e5 square is, is uh, controlled or occupied by one of their pawns. All right, so if they had taken with the f-pawn, we will have gotten a protected pass pawn. So they took with the h-pawn, and now I'm thinking, how can I take advantage of the h-file? So 93, look at d5. We've had so many lessons on uh, outposts, even though that knight could be kicked out by the c-pawn, but it's not going to be so easy. And guys, there's another pattern here, simple strategic pattern, but look at that diagonal from a2 to g8. Very nice for our bishop. So if I combine that with an attack through the h file, it's just going to be too much. Now here I'm thinking if my rooks were doubled on the d file, I could do knight f6 check and collect the rook. So I'm getting ready for it. Also, my bishop could come to f1 and c4. So a few ideas here. So the rook is going, I'm guessing, to d6 to be defended by the c pawn. But now my bishop simply enters to c4 and it's going to be really uncomfortable and lastly <laughs> um, i have the h file as well there you go 97 bishop c4 comes at the right time and guys this is just now this is too much now simple tactic pause the video if you need to but of course we gotta capitalize on that discover attack on the queen so double attack queen and rook um they decided to give up the queen probably was better to give up the rook but they felt like they had uh better chances with this guys one more time we get a, a huge advantage and we have over a minute even though we're playing three minute games there you go so my opponent resigned now we go to the next one and this one i think uh yeah so now i'm at 2456 <laughs> and we're playing another 2400 player guys same opening uh here i played um what's it here no okay so same setup you're gonna see towards the end some games where i played e3 instead but we get to the same thing nope they didn't want me to do that so knight a3 ready to go to c4 or to c2 queen e1 we know what that's for bishop d2 e3 seems like a hole but they cannot really take advantage of it as long as i have my dark square bishop d pawn is gone f pawn is gone e3 it cannot defend it by a pawn but i need to keep my my bishop and guys last thing i know that i'm driving you crazy with all of this commentary but um notice that in the game that we just played i did attack on the king side so you could do that but also you could attack on the queen side like you saw in the very first game so this flexibility is really attractive but also if you review it if you play this often you're going to bring your opponents into your territory. 
So c4, it gives me that one structure on the queen side, which makes it very easy to know my plan. My plan now is to open up the queen side, so a3, b4, because again, my pawn structure is indicating that since I have more space on the queen side. b5 is a weak square, and I think my knight is going to stay there for a little bit. See, the bishop goes after it. Now, bishop moves. What changed? Well, c6 is hanging, so my Fianchetto bishop is now open. And, of course, my knight could eventually go to e4, which is another attractive square. There you go. Just being consistent with our plan. Now, this decision, guys, uh, we cannot have it all. We have to give up the knight, but we continue with this momentum on the queen side. And one of the reasons why I wanted to show you these games, number one, we've been talking a lot about birds opening. Number two, I want to reinforce this idea that openings are not that important. Even if people say this opening is not so good, we can make it work. But ultimately, we need to get familiarized with different position types. And this is something that we had not really experienced up to this point in our course. All of these queens that expansion soon we're going to be learning the bank on gam the bank of gambit the um what is this opening uh oh, i forgot benoni the benoni and we're gonna get this kind of a uh, queen side attacks so anyhow uh rook a in rook a1 guys they are already in trouble the, the queen cannot go anywhere and bishop a6 will be met um with pawn to b5 and we got material right there Now, of course, at this point, we got to make sure we don't fall for any silly mistakes. You see, that pawn on b4, we know it's not going to make it anywhere, but we have to be careful. We don't want to lose the game because of a pass pawn like that. Now, like I always tell you, we could think of simplification or attack the king. f5, breaking through. I have the powerful piece, which is the queen. So my attack should be successful here. That's it. So we got that one. We made it to 2463. And yeah, so yeah, now look, we're playing now a 2500 player and we're using the same thing. Fianchetto on, on, on the king side for both of us. D3, queen e1, and then next thing you know, we're doing e4. That's it. We made it to the middle game. The only thing I need to do is develop my queen side minor pieces, but we know where the pieces go. Typically, the knight goes to a3, even though if they take on e4, I like to bring that knight to c3. So that's one of the little things we have to know. My bishop from c1 typically goes to e3. In this case, um, yeah, I think here I just played knight c3. This is what I typically do. And now I'm threatening to take on e5, right? So if they go knight d4, I could probably take on e5, even though they'll be hitting c2. So yeah, and here, guys, I think you saw it. Um, we had a live stream on Thursday. And one of the latest, the last games that I played, my opponent fell, got into this variation. So here I'm thinking, get the queen off the way, or I could do, I could take on e5. Now, there was one line that I played in the last game of our last stream, uh, of our live stream for thir from Thursday, where I took on e5, and I knew everything up to the point where I got their queen, because I had prepared it after this game. So... Here, uh, they want to take on e5, very smart. They want to take on e5 with the knight because then they're going to make sure to block that isolated pawn with a knight. But we definitely get chances here to improve our pieces. Knight d5 is a weak square, so that's very, very attractive. Okay. Now, what would you do, guys? Uh, we have knight takes knight, we have bishop f4, we have bishop e3. So many things to, to do here. Now, definitely we get an isolated pawn on e4, but we get some activity. Look at that. Don't forget, isolated pawns could be, they have bad things, but also good things. One of the good things is that we have semi-open files, like that f file that I'm putting pressure on. Okay, so here I'm going to get that pawn. Careful with bishop d4. <laughs> And uh, now I don't really care. Yeah, so I traded my isolated pawn for their good pawn on c5. 
And now there's so many things going on here. So bishop f4, and all of my pieces are active except for my a1 rook. No, okay. <laughs> so bishop g5 instead, even more powerful. And guys, one, one more time, we get to the middle game, our pieces are developed, and we have over a minute. Now, notice how my opponent is taking his time. Uh, it's not so easy to play this now. So many things going on. They, they're behind in development. Bishop on c8 has not moved. The rook. And they just decided to give me the queen. So another game where we got their queen. Guys, did they have to? Probably not. But they were already in, in trouble. I'm thinking, should I just move the king out of the way? Or should I take the, the bishop on d4? Notice that, yes, they're getting the my queen back. But then after I get the rook... Again, the same theme. My pieces are just too active and theirs are not so well coordinated. So I'm hitting c5. I'm trying to go to, yeah, I'm trying to go to f6 as well. There we go. And the only thing I'm missing now is activating my other rook. So 98 check, everything forcing. Whatever I do, guys, I don't want to take on g4, for example, because I help him develop the bishop. So whatever I do, I want to make sure that I do it with a tempo. So now the other knight comes in. King cannot go to g7. Okay, so now they're forced. Now bishop d5. Uh, the idea is simple. If I move my knight now uh, with a check, I could take on f7. They said no. But then knight d7 or knight d4. Yeah, knight d7. And guys, we're up on exchange. Still, um, there's a weak pawn on e6. Still we have more active pieces, this is easy to convert. So, in the other games, you saw me just going for the attack because I was up material. This time, I'm just thinking, simplify the game, that's it. Now, double up on the e-pawn, nope. Instead, we take care of the, the seventh rank or the second rank. And this is very important. Don't give your opponent any chances, guys, no counterplay. So, keep it at margin, 20 seconds is more than enough to finish this. So now this is more about not getting in trouble because we're in time pressure. Yeah, here my opponent is just playing too fast. And I'm only thinking, get all of the pawns away. If we run out of time, it's not going to be, <laughs> it's going to be a draw at least. But yeah, I realized I have 10 seconds, more than enough to do this. And we got this game. Guys, not the best technique to finish it, but... We were, uh, we were in time pressure. And opening middle game was actually pretty, pretty good. All right, so another um, bird to opening. And this time, I think, was it here? I think I played e3 this time. Yeah, so here now you see the other setup. Pony three, bishop e2, castle. And then from here, I typically do d3, knight c3, or I could do fianchetto on, on the queen side. Now, queen e1, we've talked about it. Many times we, we see this in the openings like the, the Nimso Indian. We go queen e1, queen h4. And once again, if you look at our pawn structure, it is aiming at the king side, so it only makes sense. Now, knight goes to e1. Eventually, I want to bring the knight to f2, g4. Now guys, I had to take, they were hitting c2, they were hitting e2, so now they're going to try to capitalize on the queen side, I'm going to try to capitalize on the king side. Now this is exactly the same philosophy we follow in the king's Indian defense. If my opponent is successful on the queen side, they're going to win material, maybe a pawn, two pawns, a rook, but if we are successful on the king side, we're going to get their king in checkmate. So queen g1, uh, I mean, sorry, queen g3 uh, comes to mind, I'm still hitting the knight. Uh, bishop g5 is definitely in the air, but is it really necessary? Well, maybe a little bit premature. So now I'm hitting the knight, and I'm hitting indirectly the rook that they have on b8. So there might be ideas of e6, 
even though it doesn't work, but we have to think about that. And notice guys, by now we are 2475, pretty close to 2500, and we're playing at 2461. So definitely he knows what he is, what he is doing. Now h4, um, simple, opening up lines towards the king. We know this, if you're a king's Indian defense player, um, you should know. And uh, look at this, so here I'm reviewing my opponent had, I have defeated him like eight times, he has defeated me like four times. Uh, it looks like we play a lot here on chess.com. <laughs> now we get the free rook, from the moment I put the queen on g3, I told you we could have done something about that. And now that we're up a rook, it's all about guys simplifying the game or we could just go in and attack because we have better pieces. We just need to get coordinated. So bishop f3, simple. Activating the bishop, but also it's going to help me simplify a little bit more. Okay, h3, my opponent is lost. Best thing he could do is complicate the game. So I realized that. Let me bring the king back to, I mean, the queen back to help my king. Now queen g2, I'm hitting that knight twice. And it, I'm hitting also h6. So, okay, happy to get another pawn, and all of my pieces are now active. So now I know, guys, I'm not going to lose this game. And one more time, we have over a minute to finish to finish this game. Now, bishop e4 would be very powerful, trying to get to h7, but also now I could bring my rook. So f5, they don't let me do it. Now look at this, queen h4. I move out the way, but now notice how his king and queen, they're both on the h file. So we're definitely going to get, we're going to get this one, no, no matter what. There we go. Now, queen g5 to get away with a check doesn't work because the bishop would be pinned. So this is now completely winning for the white pieces. All right, guys, so we got that one. We made it to 2483. Um, another birch opening about to, to happen. And we're playing a 2297. So this time I went back to our fianchetto on the king side. By now, all of you guys should know this. You should know this plan already. So we break on e4. Now this time e6, so a little bit different. I'm thinking of e5. I'm thinking of just developing my knight to c3. And this should be anyone who is who have been following this course up to this point, you should be able to get to, to this game. Now I offered the knight c2 move, they didn't take it. Um, it wasn't a, a good move anyways. And now all I need to do is develop my bishop from c from c1. So I could do bishop e3, bring the other rook to d1. It feels more natural. And we are immediately pinning that queen. Also, my knight could go to d6. So of course, our knight is now going to try to get to d6. It could be via b5 or via e4. Now, do we trade bishop first? I don't know. And of course, d6 could also be used for our rooks. So doubling up is very attractive. Not sure what they... Okay, so they traded, fine. Now we're controlling the light squares and our knight gets to d6 with a tempo. So can we put more pressure on the knight? So maybe we do... Queen takes, rook takes, and then we double up the rooks, or we could do knight d6, gaining a tempo by getting to d6. So guys, what would you do? You're playing this game, you get to this position, how would you continue? Trade queens, or maybe not. Knight d6 right now, or wait a little bit longer. All right, so queen e2, I'm thinking, if I'm the one putting pressure, I'm the one dictating the game, I want to keep pieces on the board, okay? So I want to keep... Uh, continue to attack. Don't forget, when we talked about knights and their outposts, we said, okay, we identified the outpost d6, we secure it, we occupy it, but after, putting the knight on d6 by itself is not going to win the game, so we need to attack, and for that, we need pieces. Now, free pawn on a6, should we take it? <laughs> Yep, that's a free pawn. Now, don't forget, if we're going to attack on the king side, we need to put pressure on the f5, f7 squares. If we're, putting, if we're going to attack on the queen side, we need b7 and b5. we got to use the squares that our knight 
is controlling. Okay, they don't like our knight anymore. Now, I don't remember exactly. What, yeah, there you go. So queen, B, queen B5, we talked about those squares. And the thing, guys, is that if they had taken on B5, we take back with our knight and our rooks become, again, really powerful on the D file. So queen comes to F3 trying to create something around my king, but it's just a queen. Unless I blunder something, we should be fine. Now, notice that knight C4 defends the bishop, but also I'm opening up the rooks. So now I'm hitting the knight three times. All right. So that's a free knight. Truth is that I couldn't go anywhere. It was pinned. And now the only thing they could do is, again, try to complicate the game with the queen. Maybe queen e2. I think they play queen e2 or queen e4 to hit the knight. We just got to make sure we don't make any silly mistakes here. Now, if they move queen e2 or queen e4, I think we could do queen d3. Offering the trade of queens and defending everything. Okay, this was played first. Okay, so now we cannot go queen d3, but still we should be fine. And look, now that I took on b5, automatically we get a passed pawn. The a pawn, if I don't find any, any plan that is better, I could just do a4, a5. That's the end of the story. Okay. And no more checks. That's it. That's the only thing that my opponent could do. Queen d3. If I trade queens, the game is over. And now look, you see, the a pawn is gone. And guys, sometimes this is what it takes. Simple plans, things that we already know. Like d6. Now, I'm happy if they take on d6. Now I get a second pass pawn. And this is just too much. So check. Check. So I gotta find a way to. There you go. No more checks anymore. Bishop c5, then bishop e7. And you see, I don't want any checks, no tricks. And now I, I was gonna do bishop e7, but this is a little bit stronger. Check, and then bishop f6, and game is over. That's it. Uh, okay, so here we're playing. This is a 24, uh, 24 49. Uh, we have played a few games already. And I go back with my fianchetto setup. Nothing new to us. I want to do d3, e4, there we go, and now this is more like a Sicilian, guys. If I play knight c3 like I did, this is like playing a closed Sicilian against, uh, well, closed Sicilian. <laughs> so knight d4 is typically what I get here. My opponent says, no, I'm going to expand quickly on the, on the b file. Okay, I don't want to take on d4. First, I don't want to give up my prior bishops. Second, I, I need to defend that pawn on c2. Now guys, an interesting idea here is bringing our rook from a1 to the king side, e1, and then if they do b4, we simply bring the knight back to d1. Alright, knight d1 without moving the rook first, it is what it is. Now, for those of you who have experience with the closed Sicilian, many times this rook from the queen side, it goes to c1. If you look at the games played by Spassky, uh, I think he played many games against uh, Karpov, and uh, I think Karpov played uh, the closed Sicilian as well. But uh, basically, this rook many times is just a very good job on, on c1. Different kind of positions, of course, but something to keep in mind. Now, I really like my e4, f4, g4. Uh, my opponent says, forget about that. I'm going for your bishop. I just decided to keep going and taking more pawns.
Now here, if they don't take on d4, I'm happy to take their bishop on g7. It's a very powerful bishop. But if they take on d4, then I get my strong pawn center with pawns on d, e, f, and g4. All right, so of course they took with the knight. Now they keep their bishop on g7, but one more time, look at those pawns. I don't know how safe <laughs> I should feel, but uh, I like it. Now, should we take on d5 or advance to e5? Um, I think it is strategically, guys, it makes more sense to push the pawn to e5. Eventually we could do f5, f6, but uh, I just figured, okay, if I get the pawn, I'm hitting the knight anyways, and I get to continue to play energetically. Now, can you want prophylactic move? I know bishop d4 is always in the air, pinning my queen, so I had to deal with it. Now, here my opponent is getting very creative. Um, I'm hitting d6. Now, his rook and queen, uh, I mean, his rook and bishop are a little bit uh, uncomfortable, uncomfortable there because they need the support of the queen. So, queen now is being hanging on a5, so the rook cannot take me on b3. And now, it's very comfortable to play this. Look at my rooks. They're not the way we typically get them, but uh, good enough for a tactic. So, I knew there was going to be a tactic here. The pieces were just uh not coordinated not well coordinated so anyhow guys we got um uh, this last game by now i had made it to 2496 i only needed to win this game to cross 2500 now as you've seen throughout the the course i have made it to 2500 a few times but it, after that it takes time to adjust guys every time you go from a thousand to 1100 1500 to 1600 1900 to 2000 you need to adjust so you're gonna go up and down until you simply adjust to it and eventually break through. So here we go. Um, this time I'm doing the finquette on the queen side. My knight from b1, typically I bring it to d2, f3, and e5. Very similar to what we get in the Nimso Indian, but of course, colors reversed. Now, if I remember, oh, look, and my opponent here is also really close to 2,500. Now, if I remember correctly, in this game, I got destroyed, <laughs> and then my opponent made a silly mistake at some point. Now, here I have the knight versus bishop, so I'm thinking if I could close the center, keep it locked, it's going to be better for my knight. I also like ideas that you've seen before with rook lift to f3, rook h3, and, and so on. So f5, I'm happy to keep the center locked even though it was attractive to take and then uh, put pressure on e6 now for the black pieces they know what i'm trying to do so they should be trying to look for that break on c4 d4 even b4 yep there we go and now they always have b4 to finally break down my center Yeah, this is the game. Now that I remember, this is the game. I I really was getting crushed. Now, just like in the other games, like I told you, um, I'm going to be banking on my king side. They're going to be trying to convert on the queen side. So I think I'm getting concerned about that before my opponent goes a5. So I said, forget about it. Let's see what happens. Now, Queen h5, okay, so just putting pressure on h7, that's always an idea. I know they're going to do b3 or b takes c3, so I need to see how I'm going to deal with it. Now, c3, I think, happened here. Now, did they take on b4 or c3? I don't know. But at this point, I'm already really uncomfortable. Yeah, they took first. Now, I'm putting pressure on c4. Pawn to c3, I believe, happened here.
And the thing is that after C3, I have to be careful because my pin might not work. Because if they ever do D take, I mean, C takes knight, and then I take their queen, they could promote with a check. I think that's something that I was concerned, concerned about. That's it, guys. If my attack on the king side does not work, then I'm done. And one more time, we get to this position with over a minute on the clock, enough to, to take our time. Now, here we have no choice. Knight g5, we gotta go with everything we've got. The conditions here are just asking us for these kind of moves. And then here, guys, I think this is where, where my opponent made uh, the mistake. And this goes to show you that even 2,500 players, draw, uh, they, they just blundered their queen. So I got away from with this one, and the remaining of the game, winning up a queen is pretty easy, but uh, I think I was in trouble here. So g6, they could get the rook. That's it, just looking for that checkmate. Bishop f8. And that's it, guys. This is just too much. F3, of course. Let me have that. And then um, we simply got final tactic. We leave him with no pieces and checkmate in two moves. So there you go, guys. Uh, not the best games out there. We made it to 2504, but more importantly, you get to see that even though we're using this bad opening that many people don't like, um, well, we still played well in our middle game and end game, and we were able to convert. So with that said, I think after this, we're not going to I'm not going to continue to talk about the birds opening for a while, but uh, we're going to go back to our English opening. We haven't finished it. we got to talk about the Sicilian. And more importantly, we got to continue to learn about middle and end game. So with that said, I will see you in our next video.